This conference will now be recorded. All right, President Gilbert, the floor is yours. Good morning and call me to order. We'll go to roll call. Great. Trustee Gilbert. Present. Present. Lee Reader. Aye. Oh, here. Lee Reader, present. Baptist. I am here. Thank you. Baines. Here. Baines, present. Brandis. Brandis here. Thank you. Perez. Present. Thank you. Tom Smith. Present. Thank you. Okay. The quorum of the board's been established. Thank you, Jolene. Uh, on to approval of the agenda. Was there a motion to approve the agenda? There are no changes from staff. So moved. I'll second. Well, a motion by Barandas, a second by Lee Reader. Jolene, will you take roll? I will. Trustee Gilbert? Aye. Gilbert, aye. Lee Reader? Aye. Reader, aye. Abdus? Aye. Abdus, aye. Baines? Aye. Baines, aye. Barandas? Aye. Barandas, aye. Perez? Aye. Perez, aye. Smith? Aye. Smith, aye. Thank you. Approved. <clears throat> Thank you, Jolene. All right, Tom, do you want to do the pledge item one four? Okay, just follow me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, with liberty and justice for all. Two. Thank you. Tom. All right, so we'll move on to item 1.5 on our agenda, the oath of office. Um, I will pull up the, Tom, I'm gonna mute you. Looks like we're getting some feedback. There we go. Um, so what we'll do is President Gilbert will read the oath of office. Um, actually, what'll happen is he'll read the first line here I, and then you guys state your name, and then collectively between Trustee Lee Reader, Trustee Perez, and Trustee Baines, you guys will all read together uh, what's on the screen after you state their state your name. Just makes it a little more efficient. Um, I know there'll be some feedback with three open mics on, but uh, makes it a little bit easier than doing all, all three separately and in the back and forth. So, Mr. Gilbert, do I, and then they'll state their names and then finish off. Okay, we'll start with I. I, Jack Baker. Do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California against all enemies, foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the Constitution of the United States and the Constitution of the State of California. That I take this obligation freely, without any material reservation or purpose of evasion, and that I will well faithfully discharge the duties upon which I am about to enter. Thank you, everyone. I know that's a little awkward doing it virtually, um, but that's the, the state we're in. So welcome. Congratulations to Trustee Lee Reader, Trustee Baines, and our newest trustee, uh, Ed Perez. So welcome aboard, Ed, and i um, glad to have Elena and Jag back on the board. So congratulations to everyone. Um, it was a historic election for the district this year in that we had a record number of uh, trustee candidates and turnout. So congratulations to the three of you and we look forward to uh, working together for the next four years. Uh, if nobody moves. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah. <laughs> Kevin, this is uh, this is Tom. Can I ask a question? Uh, at the last meeting, you said that the, the vote count was on the website. I couldn't find it. 
But what was of interest to me is I noticed that one of the candidates was a Garden Highway resident. And I was curious as to how many votes, uh, if he was representing a block of uh, Garden Highway folks. Uh, but anyway, I was just curious, is the, is the vote count up on the website now? Um, I'll be sure that, um, I'm not sure if we posted it to the website or not, but I'll be sure to send that information on to the trustees um, and then we'll have it available if anybody wants to inspect it. But we do have the final tally uh, on the sheet with the total number of votes. So, oh, and then Christina just put a link in the chat. So um, it is apparently um, up on the website. So you can look at the vote count there um, if you go into the chat portion here, uh, Trustee Smith, uh, Christina provided that link. Um, so at this point, we'll move on to item 1.6. Um, every December, we establish the election of our board president and vice president. So I will turn it over to the board for nominations for board president and vice president. Okay, with that opening is, uh, we're open for uh, nominations for board president. I would like to, this is Nick, I'd like to um, nominate Elena for president. Uh, this is Jag, I'll second that. Okay, so what we'll do, um, if there are no other nominations, we have a motion and a second for <laughs> Trustee Lee Reader as board president. If there are no other nominations, we can go ahead and take a roll call vote on that motion, Jolene. Great, uh, Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert, aye. Lee Reader? Aye. Reader, aye. Abdus? Aye. Abdus, aye. Baines? Aye. Baines, aye. Barandis? Aye. Barandis, aye. Smith? Aye. Oh, sorry, I forgot Perez. <laughs> Trustee Perez? Aye. Trustee Perez, aye. Thank you. Congratulations, Lena. Congratulations, Elena. Um, is there a motion for vice president? I would like to go ahead yeah, and nominate Tom Gilbert for vice president. He's motion been a great the, the reader for Gilbert is vice president. Is there a second? I'll nickel second. Second by trustee Abdus. Are there other nominations for vice president? Hearing none, Jolene, will you take the roll for vice president? Yes, trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert Eiley Reader. Aye. Reader I Abdus. Aye. Abdus I Baines. Aye. Baines I Barandis. Aye. Barandis I Perez. Aye. Perez I Smith. Aye. Smith I. Motion is approved. Congratulations, Tom. Thank you, Jolene. Congratulations, Tom. Um, all right, we'll move on to designation of board secretary. Um, staff has no recommendation for a change. Um, Jolene currently serves as our board secretary and does a fantastic job as the board secretary. So um, if there are any other suggestions, we will leave it the same. We just need a motion to approve Jolene as um, board secretary. I move to approve Jolene as secretary. I'll second. Motion by Gilbert, second by Abdus. Jolene, will you take the roll for your nomination? <laughs> Awkward, yes. Trustee Gilbert? Aye. Gilbert, aye. Lee Reader? Aye. Lee Reader, aye. Abdus? Aye. Abdus, aye. Baines? Aye. Baines, aye. Barandis? Aye. Barandis, aye. Perez? Aye. Perez, aye. Smith? Aye. Smith, aye. Motion's approved. Thank Thanks, you. Julian. Congratulations. You get to continue to, to uh, do all our resolutions and everything. Thank you. <laughs> um, moving on to item 118, one, conflict of interest. Uh, if there's any items on the agenda that might be a conflict to any trustees, you can go ahead and state so now. Uh, this uh, is Nick. I don't have a conflict. Wait, wait this, is, uh, this is Nick. I just... Before we get into this, I, I just wanted to say congratulations uh, to the president, vice president, obviously secretary. That you know, today's a 
was a big deal in many ways. Uh, uh, but Elena is the first woman president uh, in the history of RD1000. And uh, that's a big deal and should be acknowledged for what that is. And so congratulations to Elena and congratulations to the district. Um, and then I do want to say to Ed, I uh, wish we were in person, but I want to welcome you to the board. Uh, you're going to find uh, uh, this is a great group of folks to work with. And uh, we look forward to hang, uh, having you and having you in the discussions in your experience. Uh, and also obviously want to congratulate Elena and Jag uh, firsthand on their reelection. So thanks for that little sidebar. Yeah, thank you, Nick. So that's not a conflict, right? Nick, you're not, you're not entering that into a conflict of interest. So. Yeah, I, I'm not, I'm not, I was waiting for an opportunity to say that you moving fast. So no, that's not a conflict. All uh, right, yeah, yeah. I move fast. So I want to respect your time. I know we have a couple of trustees that have some meetings um, right after ours, so I want to keep moving forward. Um, we'll go on to item um, two. There are no scheduled presentations. Um, then on to item three, public comment. If there are non-agendized items that the public would like to speak to, you'll have three minutes to do so, and you can do so now. I saw Deborah that you raised your hand, so Deborah, the floor is yours. Well, Nick kind of stole my thunder. I just wanted to uh, <laughs> congratulate uh, Elena and Jag for returning to the board. Welcome, Trustee Perez. And to tell you, you are going to have so much fun. I have never served on a public entity board or commission that is more dedicated and delightful as this one. Why else would I get up on a Friday morning during my <laughs> retirement at eight o'clock, but to join these fabulous people? Uh, staff, everyone is great. Um, I wish you uh, success. Congratulations, Elena, represent, and Tom. Um, love y'all to pieces, miss you and have a great holiday season. Thank you, Deborah. you too. Merry Christmas to you and your family, and it's good to see your face this morning. Deborah, thank you, and sorry for stealing your thunder. <laughs> it's not, it's, I don't think it's stealing, I think it's, it's just underscoring. That's okay, kind of Nick, if anybody was gonna steal it, I'm glad it was you. <laughs> <laughs> I miss you, Deborah. I hope you're doing well. Thank you, Merry Christmas. Thank you. All right, are there any other members of the public that would like to speak on non-agendized items? Okay, hearing none, we'll move on to item 4.1, general manager's report. Again, in the effort to uh, save time and respect the, uh, the demands of all the trustees this morning, I will um, not have any additive to what's been presented in the general manager's report and I'll turn it over for questions if there are any on the GM report for December. Hearing none, on to item 4.2, operations manager's report. Um, any questions for Gabe or myself on the ops report? I will just say on both of these items, thanks for you know, the detailed reports, they're very helpful and uh, thanks for the work that goes into it. Yeah, there's countless hours that, well, they're they're counted because we put them on our time card, but um, there's a lot of work that goes into uh, these two reports to put the information there. Um, on, on the ops manager's report, um, again, it, it seems like a monthly uh, thing that I do, but you know, Gabe has really done a tremendous job on the cleanup work, and it seems like we're getting more and more calls on encampment work and stuff like that. And um, we have another cleanup that we're going to do on the Natomas East Main Drain on Monday, starting Monday. And this is coordination with the city um, on the ordinance and in our standard operating procedures, which Gabe put together um, with Downey Brand and the city so Gabe's been spending a lot of time you know addressing this issue and um, we're finally seeing some movement we did do that cleanup behind Home Depot uh, the week of Thanksgiving and was a huge success so we're starting to see the implementation of 
all of our efforts over the last you know two and a half to three years it's finally starting to to get some legs here and and start walking on its own so anyway um thank you gabe and just wanted to point that out for the trustees that um we're, we're moving forward on that and we're going to start the coordination effort with the county in fact it's already started um with with gabe working with the county and getting those those key stakeholders which i talked about at the november meeting so thanks gabe on item 4.3 uh general counsel report i believe that scott and rebecca are both on this morning um so rebecca i'll turn it to you good morning um so as you know we wrapped up our election um and congratulations to all of our newly elected uh, trustees as well as everyone who ran it was great to see the the turnout here um and participation here um kevin and i are continuing to fine-tune your elections every year to get them running like a well-oiled machine so um council has also been working on prepping you all for the upcoming uh fee study balloting as well as assisting on some of the um, unhoused issues that that kevin mentioned before so we've been we've been busy this month thanks rebecca any questions for scott or rebecca this morning Hearing none, we'll move on to the consent calendar. I would entertain a motion to approve items 5 1 through 5 6 on the consent calendar. I'll list them here for you to see. Kevin, uh, before we take that up, I just want to mention um, I just noticed uh, on 5.6 on the bank account sig signatures, I uh, just wanted to make sure my first, my, my legal first name is updated. I think it's listed as Edward. Um, it should be Edwin, E D W O N. Okay, we will make that change. Thanks for, for pointing that out, um, Ed. And um, so Ed's talking about here. And so we'll make that change on the resolution and we'll have all the trustees come in and sign um, the, uh, the resolution. If it's approved this morning, um, we'll need you guys to come in and sign that at some point next week. So then we can get the bank cards and everything done. Correct, Jolene? She's not in her head, yes. So, yep. Th thank you, uh, Trustee Perez, for that correction and noticing that. I apologize and for the error. Can I uh, add a similar comment? I've always done officially. I'm Thomas W. Smith because there, there's one or two other Tom Smiths out there in the world. So if you could <laughs> maybe, make maybe one or two. Yeah, Tom, we'll make that change. I always use my middle initial as well, so no problem. Okay. Thomas W. So, we'll make sure that we have that in there. One other, also, one other, also quick talk. Question, one other quick question on the budget, and just in the big picture, it looked like income was around four million and expenses were eight million. Uh, and I don't want to get into the details of that, but I thought that, in, in looking at that quickly, I, I couldn't figure out where the rest of the money was coming from. Is there a simple answer for that, Kevin? Yeah, Tom, we'll get into that in the item 6.1, audited financials. So we'll, we'll take that up. Um, and Tom Gilbert, yes, we'll, we'll add your middle initial as well. I know that you use that. So um, I will entertain a motion for consent calendar items 5.1 through 5.6 with the changes as discussed to 5.6. This is Nick. I'll move, the, I'll move approval of consent. And then this is Tom. I'll second. A motion by Abdus, second by Smith. Jolene, will you take roll? Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert Eiley Reader. Aye. Reader I Abdus. Aye. Abdus I Baines. Aye. Baines I Brandis. Aye. Brandis I Perez. Aye. Perez I Smith. Aye. Smith I. Thank you. Motion's approved. Thank you, Jolene. Um, on item 6.1, we're fortunate to have uh, Ingrid with Richardson and Company, um, our our auditor, and and her the firm she works for, Richardson and Company, as well as uh, Rob Merritt, our district accountant, um, and they will present. We have about um, Rob and Ingrid about 10 to 15 minutes here for the presentation. Um, the financial audit was uh, presented to the finance committee um in november and um the finance committee recommended moving forward with the audit for 
review and receive of the annual audit. So Ingrid, I'll turn it over to you. I have your audit summary that I can pull up if you wanted me to start with that. Uh, yes, I was just going to highlight some of the items on the uh, summary rather than scrolling through the detailed pages since we did go over the reports at length with the um, Finance Committee. Uh, so uh, to start with the Independent Auditor's Report, um, pleased to report it is an unmodified or clean opinion on the financial statements. Uh, we did review um, some of the pages throughout the financial statements. Um, it's showing that on your statement of net position, you have uh, 9.6 million of reserves available for future use. That's on the full accrual basis, meaning that that's after deducting the uh, pension and other post-employment benefits liabilities. Uh, the statement of activities, uh, which is also full accrual, is showing expenses exceeding revenues or a net loss for the year of 1.6 million. However, that does include uh, depreciation on your assets, which is not an actual cash transaction, and that's a, uh, about 1.6 million for the depreciation. Um, also, a non-cash transaction that's included in that um, net loss is um, writing down your investment in the city pool. The pool's investment was uh, the city pool. Uh, overall, the market value was less than um, the book value, so uh, your share of the loss on that is 94,000, and so that was reflected as an expense as well. The, the fund balance sheet show the numbers without the um, pension and the OPEB liabilities. And, and so that's showing uh, 10.2 million. And those are set aside um, into various reserves uh, as approved by the board reserve policy. Uh, the general fund expenses um, also are higher than revenues. Um, and that's due to a few items, mostly increased maintenance activities. Uh, there was also a purchase of uh, an excavator during the year and uh, a pickup as well. Uh, so I um, wanted to point out that that fact that there is a net loss is consistent with what you had budgeted. You planned on using about $2 million of your uh, fund balance, and you actually used about $1.1 million of your um, fund balance or reserves uh, for those various projects. Uh, if you wanted to look at the components of your fund balance, those are on page 25, and those just show the, the three different components of your reserve um, that includes the flood fight, um, O&M reserve, and um, capital reserve. Uh, the uh, pension plan uh, information is discussed in note E. Um, the pension liability went down considerably um, during the year from 1.3 million down to 700,000. And that's primarily because of the unusually large um, investment earnings on um, your plan assets as of June 30, 21. Apparently the market was really good as of that date. Uh, and so those investment earnings uh, caused a reduction in your um, liability. Uh, your OPEB liability, which is your uh, retiree health care benefits, uh, that liability um, increased from 180,000 up to 500,000. And that's primarily because um, you did hire a new actuary to perform your valuations. And uh, there was changes in um, valuation assumptions, uh, primarily their change on how they handled retiree health um, premium rates, uh, which is in line with actuarial requirements. So we were anticipating uh, when you changed actuaries that that liability would increase. So that's um, not unusual. Uh, we did issue a separate report on internal control and compliance. And that was also a clean report indicating that we noted no weaknesses in your internal controls and that you complied with uh, the laws and, and regulations that are material to the financial statements. Uh, we also issued a separate governance letter and that um, identified just two um, small adjustments during the audit process, but overall the accounting records were clean and in and, and good condition. Uh, we also had no difficulties in performing the audit. The audit process uh, went smoothly. 
Uh, we did issue a separate management letter uh, that's included in your packet. And uh, again, these are not considered weaknesses in internal controls, but just additional um, areas that we identified for um, improving controls. Uh, the items that are um, mentioned in that letter are um, ones that have carried over from previous audits and are still in the process of implementation. Uh, those are listed there. Um, the first two items have to do with payroll, um, the payroll register we're recommending be reviewed by the general manager and that document be reviewed, uh, documented with an initial and that timesheets be reviewed. Also, the, the next two items relate to the purchasing process, uh, recommending that purchase orders be complete, have all the vendor information on them and that they be approved and that also the purchasing policy uh, be actually formalized. So, um, that's a high level uh, summary of the audit and I'd like to open it up to any questions or additional areas for clarification. Thank you, Ingrid, for the, the summary there. Uh, Tom, did you wanna, Ms. I gotta, we have three Tom's trustees. Uh, Mr. Gilbert, would you like to add anything as the finance committee chair? Right, I, <clears throat> we did go into this in detail again it took quite a bit of time to go through it, but uh, the main thing to focus on is <clears throat> the final management letter in terms of any action on our side. Subsequent to the finance committee meeting under the payroll process and review, um, we agree that signing off on the payroll register um, is appropriate uh, just for that additional documentation of oversight. Um, you know, uh, the timesheets provide control for two things. One is actual pay and the other is allocation of our staff's cost against projects um, and it was my understanding that the timesheet that wasn't uh, signed off on was Kevin's uh, his timesheet does not have any impact on payroll <clears throat> I mean he's a salaried um, uh, employee but his timesheet is to support allocation of his salary so that is the purpose of that him filling out a timesheet and so um we believe that the controls are such that over payroll we're not talking about a payroll issue we're talking about an allocation issue and that we will um provide for that review periodically of kevin's allocations um the question is who who would review kevin's timesheet and i guess it has to be i would suggest maybe the board president um then um, purchase orders. I um, suggest that you don't want to do that every two weeks, but anyway. No, no, I yeah. say periodically. Yeah. <laughs> you know, twice a year is periodically. So yeah. um, the purchase orders, um, I believe that our, our internal, Kevin, you can speak to this, uh, staff have just been directed to make sure that nothing's processed without the complete package for uh, payment. Yes, yeah, so and the purchasing policy. After, yeah, Tom, if you want me to explain. Sure, your, go ahead. Um, the audit presentation at the Finance Committee, um, Joanne and I did have a conversation about making sure that invoices are reviewed and circulating them through to the project managers, whether it's Jolene, Gabe, or myself, prior to um, processing or doing the GL uh, entry and cutting the check and make sure that the invoices um, are signed off on by the project manager and then we'll hand them over to Christina and then she'll process the payment for that. And so that'll have the check off on the, the uh, purchase orders and the invoice submitted with appropriate project uh, manager sign off. And that was the comment during the finance committee meeting. Okay, and then you might want to comment about the purchasing policy. We're developing policies, right? Yeah, so last year um, we started a process working with Downey Brand using the CSDA model to um, update all of our district policies. We kind of got buried in the in the weeds um, a couple times and really, you know, fits and starts of doing that policy um, with everything else with the, the fee, the trustee election and um, the outreach efforts with the SWIFT that we've done this year that's kind of taken a back seat for the whole global development of district policies. But at the finance committee, the recommendation from the finance committee was to 
um, independent of the entire manual and update it out because that might take some time would be to adopt a formal purchasing policy that would be um, inserted into the eventual um, district-wide policy manual but to do that prior to the start of fiscal year 22-23 so uh, we'll assign that to the finance committee um, Downey Brand and I will use uh, examples from CSDA and we'll schedule a finance committee meeting probably for you know right around the first quarter into first quarter start a second quarter of 2023 review that and then bring it to the board prior to our new fiscal year so that was the recommendation and we will do that on the purchasing policy ahead of the the global district policy development okay good I have no other comments. All right, Tom. Yeah, so the recommendation was from the Finance Committee to um, review this. And I, I want to thank staff again and um, Ingrid and, and her team, as well as Rob, um, for, you know, and Jolene and Christina. It does take a lot to provide the data. It's very uh, resource intensive to go through an annual audit, but um, I'm happy that, that we have another unmodified uh clean opinion from our auditors and um just you know thank you again jolene and christina internally as well as rob for putting that together and thanks ingrid it's been it's great working with you for the last two years um, we did make a change to richardson two years ago and um things have gone very smoothly especially with you know the pandemic in place and you know coordinating uh document delivery back and forth so anyway um i'll turn it over there is no well, I guess, what do we do? Do we do we take a, a motion to receive and accept? Let me go back to the staff report here. Yeah, so we'll, we'll take a motion to review and receive um, the audited financial statements for uh, fiscal year ending June 30th, 2022. And then once that's done, uh, Ingrid and her team will uh, make sure that it's processed and submitted to the state in time in January. I move to review and receive the audit and financial statements for the year end of June 30th, 2022. Motion by the reader, second. Second. Second by Barandis. Jolene, will you take roll? Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert Eiley, reader. Aye. Reader, I act this. Oh, I'm sorry, Julian. Uh, Nick texted me. He left the meeting halfway through the financial presentation or the audit presentation. So Nick okay. had to step off. Okay. Thank you. Um, Baines. I. Baines. I. Brandis. I. Brandis. I. Perez. I. Perez. I. Smith. I. Smith. I. Thank you. Questions approved. Hey, and, and Tom Smith, I know you had a question during the, the consent calendar items. I'll follow up with you and maybe we can set a time for you to come in next week and we'll go through your questionnaire and hopefully be able to explain that in more detail. Um, and in the future, if you have questions when, once you receive the board packet, give me a call and we can go through the detail um, ahead of the board meeting so I can explain or at least provide if you have questions and then you'll get the detail that you need because um, sometimes we just don't have the time or it gets a little clunky to go through it during the board meeting. So I'm always available if you have questions outside of the board meetings. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, I am building up a batch of, of questions uh, and do want to do the tour of the district. I want to understand more about the district and, and, and how we operate and uh, and, and things like that. So uh, let me look at my calendar and uh, we can set something up. Thanks, Kevin. Right. Yeah, sounds good. In regards to the tour, I will be asking now that um, you, I, I was kind of waiting on the tour for the results of our trustee election in November. And so I will be asking Gabe to set up a, a tour of district facilities for both you and, um, and Ed to, uh, to go around and, and tour our facilities. I think that's important. So we'll be reaching out here in, in the next month to look at calendars to set that up. So thank you.
On item 6.2, uh, Rebecca, I'm gonna turn it back over to you now um, to go through. There is um, two changes that, or one change that we need to make in the resolution. It's just a typo. And I'll explain that after Rebecca goes through or Scott um, go through the uh, item 6.2. Good morning. Um, so I think as I mentioned um, in your last meeting on your um, upcoming balloting for your uh, proposed property related fee, um, Prop 218 sets some high level procedural and substantive requirements for fees, but unlike the elections code, it doesn't give you really specific parameters for things like what should, what should be included on a ballot and how should the ballots be printed. Um, and so what we do as a matter of best practices before going out to send out ballots is we set out a resolution that says, how are we gonna conduct this election? What does this look like? Um, it includes things like, we will make sure that we mail the ballots 45 days, at least 45 days in advance of the election. Um, we will not open any of the ballots until the election is closed. And so that's what this resolution is. Um, and um, one, one piece of uh, terminology that's important here is we, we call this an election, um, but the code is really clear, despite using the word election all the time, um, that this is not a, an election for purposes of the California Constitution or the California Elections Code. Um, that's significant because in these property-related fee sort of balloting processes, um, your ballot is tied to your property. Um, and so we can't do things like ensure absolute privacy because your ballot's tied to your property. Um, we, we know who, who's done what. We, we, and we do our best to keep within the bounds of that, but you know, be aware that that, um, that dynamic exists. So uh, the recommendation here is to adopt the resolution uh, pertaining to uh, how the, the uh, balloting will be conducted, again, Pretty, pretty generic and um, standardized processes for how ballots are going to be um, reviewed and considered. Um, all, all intended to, and you'll actually see this this designation within the um, the uh, resolution as well. None of this is intended to modify what the code already requires. Um, it's intended to memorialize that and then um, provide guidance where the code is silent. Um, so uh, one note here, we would initially some time ago talked about doing your um, fee balloting on February 10th. And then at our last meeting, we discussed, gosh, let's put it back to March so that everybody has a chance to get involved, participate and see it. And so this date here is a holdover from the, um, from the prior version when we we're talking about doing a, a February um, ballot. It's actually gonna be March 10th, 2023. Um, so we'll update uh, that as well. Yeah, there's a couple of references in the resolution to February 10th, so we'll correct that to March 10th if the board approves the the resolution this morning. Any questions for Rebecca, Scott, or myself on the 218 balloting? Uh, yeah, Kevin, I, I did have a question about the uh, the balloting. Um, it, if I remember it correctly from the last presentation, I think it was the prior board meeting. I, I was left with the impression that. To, for, for the uh, item to pass, um, a majority of the eligible voters must, have, in other words, we had an affirmative yes. Um, but when I read the resolution, it, it seems to suggest it's a majority of those voting. Return, majority of returned ballots. Yeah, returned majority ballots. of returned ballots. Okay. So, and yeah, that's so the, the difference between the first step at the last meeting was that in 218 a protest hearing has to be a majority of the parcels within the district protesting the fee regardless of whether and and it's incumbent upon the property owner to return a protest um, ballot in the absence of a return protest form the assumption is that there's no registered or logged protest on step two which we're discussing today which will be sending out this ballot for prop 218 it's okay now who's in favor who's not in favor and we have to have the ma a majority so 50 percent plus one of returned responses to um, move forward and enact the fee okay thank you for the clarification because the, the first one was definitely a higher bar so 
Yeah, thanks, thanks, Ed. Um, any other questions from trustees on resolution 2022-1203? Hearing none, any public comment on this item? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion to approve item 6.2, resolution number 2022-1203, adopting Proposition 218 procedures for our 2023 stormwater service fee balloting process. I move. Second. Motion by Gilbert, second by Baines. Was that you, Jack? Yes. Thank you. Jillian, will you take roll? Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert Ivy Reader. Aye. Reader I Baines. Aye. Baines I Brandis. Aye. Brandis I Perez. Aye. Perez I Smith. Aye. Smith I. Motion is approved. Thank you, Jolene. And thank you, uh, Rebecca, for putting that together. I know 218 is not always um, <laughs> very clear. So uh, we have a process we will be uh, working on um the mailing for the ballots and a voter guide to be inserted with the ballots that are going to be mailed out and those will be sent out by january 15th um, we are sending out a postcard in december uh, to inform just like we did for the trustee election to inform the community and our property owners that they will be receiving an important ballot and we want to hear from them uh, regarding the proposed fees. So the, we'll start with a postcard in December, wait till the holidays are finished and then send out the ballot and then we'll count in March. So thank you everyone. Um, and we'll continue to move forward and we'll see what, what the public has to say. So um, on the item 6.3, I don't believe that Angelique's on the, on the call this morning. I did invite her to attend the meeting, but um, we did want to recognize um, Angelique Ashby for her service to the community um, as both a member of Sacramento City Council and the uh, and the Safeco Board. Um, she did play a pivotal and important role in securing funding for the exterior levy improvements and the Thomas Levy Improvement Project, as well as um, as an advocate for us in adoption of the city ordinance um, to help designate the levies as critical public infrastructure. So. Um, the resolutions here, I would entertain any comments or um, questions on this item from both the trustees and the public. Hearing none, is there a motion to approve resolution 2022-1204? So moved. Second. Second. All right, motion by Lee Reader. I wasn't sure who was the second. Tom Berendez. Oh, Tom, Tom yeah. All right, Tom, Tom Berendez. <laughs> yeah, just put Tom down, and then we'll figure it out later. Yeah, put Tom, and we'll fill in the last name. All right, uh, second by Berendez. Jolene, will you take roll? Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert Ivy Reader. Aye. The Reader, aye. Baines. Aye. Baines, aye, Berendez. Aye. Berendez, aye, Perez. Aye. Perez, aye. Smith. Aye. Thank you. Motion's approved. Thank you, Jillian. Um, on to committee reports and trustee comments. Um, item 7 1, uh, the only committee meeting we had between the November meeting and today's meeting was the executive committee. So if there are any questions or comments from trustees, I'll entertain those now. All right. Um, one thing that um, with the election of board president and vice president here uh, to look forward to our committee assignments that will be uh, taken up and it's on recommendation by the board president. So Elena and I will be working on uh, committee assignments and she will make that recommendation at the January uh, board meeting. And so she may be reaching out to uh, other trustees to gauge their interest in committee assignments um, and then we'll build that forward and bring it to the board for committee assignments in January now that we have our new board established. So Elena, you have some work to do over the holidays. I'll be in touch with everyone. All right, thank you. 
All right, at this time, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. There are no closed session items today. So moved. I'll second. <laughs> motion by Brandis, second by the reader. Uh, Jolene, we take roll for adjournment. Yes, Trustee Gilbert. Aye. Gilbert, aye, Lee Reader. Aye. Lee Reader, aye, Baines. Aye. Baines, aye, Brandis. Aye. Brandis, aye, Perez. Aye. Perez, aye, Smith. Aye. Smith, aye. Motion's approved. All right. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year to all of you. Uh, Jolene, thank you for the, the role there. I just want to wish everyone a, a safe and, and healthy holiday season and look forward to working with everybody in the new year. Bye-bye, everyone. Nice seeing you, Deborah.